Okay, so this is a video just to go over uh, the basics of enzyme-controlled reactions um, before we discuss what the effect of uh, factors that affect enzymes, what effect they have on the rate of reaction. Okay, so let's begin. Um, when we look at enzymes, there's a few things that we always have to consider. So, um, first of all, on the x-axis, we're going to be looking at the effect of a certain factor. Let's just call that F for now. Okay, and that will vary along the x-axis. On the y-axis, we're looking at the rate of the enzyme-controlled reaction. Now, usually, uh, the way you, you can uh, look at the uh, rate of a reaction is how quickly the product is being made. So remember that when enzymes are working, what they are doing is converting a substrate into a product. Okay. Now, that is a very slow occurring reaction uh, without the enzyme, but when the enzyme is present, that reaction will speed up. Okay. The enzyme obviously regenerates by the end of the reaction and can um, carry out the reaction all over again with a new substrate. Okay, so slowly converting all the substrate into product. Um, okay, so how do we monitor those reactions? Well, usually what you do is you look at how quickly the product is being formed. So on the y-axis, we're usually looking at the rate of product formation. Okay, so we're looking at the rate of product formation on that axis, but it could be anything else. It could be the rate of a color change during the reaction. It could be the rate of substrate depletion. Okay, so how quickly the substrate is being lost. Anything that measures how quickly the substrate is being converted into product can be on this y-axis. So be aware that it could be different things, but ultimately it's measuring the, pro the, the, the rate of the enzyme activity. Okay, so the other basics that we, we have to consider is that at some point the enzyme activity could be very low. So remember this factor, this factor that um, is nameless at the moment, we're varying it along this x-axis, and as we change that factor, it's going to affect the enzyme. Now, if it affects it in a negative way, it's going to it's going to make the rate of reaction very low. So the product formation at this stage is going to be low, okay? But as we vary this factor, it might the variations that we carry out might increase the rate of reaction, i.e. increase the rate of product formation. Okay, but as we change the factor even more, we might cause it to affect the enzyme in a negative way and the rate will therefore come down. Okay, so these are the basics. Remember that we are always looking, this line that we are following right here, that line is indicating, this line right here is indicating the rate of the reaction. Okay, always refer to it like that. So whatever you talk, whatever factor you're talking about, you're always talking about the effect of that factor on the rate of product formation or the rate of reaction. Okay. Okay. So, what are the basic words and what what is the terminology that we have to use to describe what's going on here? Um, so remember what's happening. So it's the enzyme, okay, and that is undergoing collisions with the substrate, okay, and because the enzyme is complementary, or the active site, I should say, is complementary to the substrate, um, they will form an enzyme substrate complex. And if this enzyme substrate complex is formed, 
eventually you'll form an enzyme product complex and eventually then the enzyme will have produced or the enzyme would have helped make a product from the original substrate okay so these are the the basics of the language that we'll be using when we discuss the other factors that affect this uh, enzyme controlled reaction